Good afternoon on today's Angry Extraterrestrial Bulletin. First, the U.S. military declassified documents on UAPs. Then it was the U.S. Border Patrol and Customs Agents. And now, finally, the Department of Energy has their collection of documents to declassify and release online without a whole lot of explanation. And it would appear that our visitors are extremely interested in our nuclear facilities, especially one particular account where swarms of UAPs appeared over one of our most sensitive nuclear facilities, not once but twice in 2019. All of this and more coming at you on The Angry Astronaut right now. Good afternoon, and once again, welcome to The Angry Astronaut. Really appreciate you folks watching. If you would allow me a couple of minutes to talk about the state of the channel. Incidentally, if you would prefer not to do that, well, just skip to right here, and you can get straight into the content if you like. Okay, for the rest of you, just wanted to let you know that last month, I had a record number of views. For the first time, clocked a million views in one month month. That had never happened before. Thank you so much for that. However, because of Google AdWords, because of the state of advertising right now in the world, the money that I got paid was average if you compared it to the money I was getting paid four or five months ago. It is absurd how much Google AdWords has dropped off in their support of creators lately. And the last thing I want to do is to ask viewers for their support, but once again, I find myself doing this, and it would be a simple thing to accomplish. If only 1% of my subscribers were to join Patreon, which by the way comes with tons of benefits, exclusive content, and also early releases. For example, this video is going to be released five hours early for Patreon supporters. Well, that would solve my problems forever. So, in any event, I don't want to ask any of you to support me unless it's financially easy for you to do so, though. If you're hard up, I don't want your money. Please, don't do that. But after that having been said and done, let's go on and move on to the topic at hand. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about UFOs. First of all, I would really like to talk about the CIA UFO topic again. Once again, I made a commitment to bring up that topic again. If the previous video hit 4,000 likes, we're so, so very close to that right now. If you haven't watched that particular video, the link is right here and at the end of the video. But as far as this particular topic is concerned, every single department in the government seems to be releasing UAP information right now. They all seem to have their own documentation about strange, unexplained objects flying over their facilities. And one of the most disturbing are the reports from the Department of Energy, especially in regards to nuclear plants. Apparently, UAPs have been spotted over a variety of nuclear facilities across the country. This has been an ongoing pattern for many decades. And recently, the Department of Energy released a plethora of documents on the subject. Perhaps one of the most disturbing was a group of UAPs that appeared over one of our most sensitive nuclear facilities in 2019. And they appeared not once, but twice. So apparently, the Department of Energy's relationship with UFOs and UAPs, whatever you want to call them, goes back a very, very long time. In a letter dated the 23rd of November, 1970, an official at the Department of Energy had this to say, I'm sorry that I cannot fill out the attached form, I'm assuming this form has something to do with UFO sightings, since the times and dates of any sightings escape me. I can, however, tell you that during the years 1948 through 1951, several sightings of green lights were made at Los Alamos. These usually occurred during the early part of the night. 
9 to 11 and were usually in the Jemez Mountains. Now, interestingly enough, the Jemez Mountains have been a hot spot of U.S sightings ever since, like a lot of New Mexico, but we'll go on. I can recall several instances of green lights weaving in and out of the mountain peaks. This was all reported to the Protective Force headquarters and should be a matter of record in their logs. I also recall one instance of five objects flying over Los Alamos in the afternoon. They were flying from southeast to northwest and appeared to be flying in formation. I believe Ward Johnson of the Protective Force was aware of five of six people who sighted these objects. Another person you might check with is W.I. Wilson of the Protective Force. Any of the Protective Force members that was in the Hill during the early 50s should recall all of the reported sightings during this time. I'm sorry that I can't do more to help. I'm sure, however, that if you can obtain access to the Pro Force logs during the above periods, that the information can be obtained as to the time and dates of the green light sightings. Interestingly enough, the person who received this letter, a Department of Energy official named James L. Tuck, subsequently wrote to a Colonel Murray who at the Department of Mechanical and Technical Equipment, and he said as follows, quote, as agreed in our telephone conversation of today's date, I would like to have the recipe that was used for the simulated atomic bomb demonstrations. We are interested in the large atmospheric vortices which are produced as reported in the book Scientific Study of Unidentified Flying Objects by Dr. Edward Condon. Now, why he would be interested in this particular topic is anybody's guess, but one would assume that these atmospheric vortices had been reported in relation to this overall investigation from the Department of Energy. Now, apparently, Mr. Tuck remained connected to this issue for many years because several years later, a Tom Doggle sent the following letter, quote, Dear Jim, mindful of your interesting report on ball lightning, I am enclosing comments on same by a UFO believer, James M. McCampbell in his Ufology 1976, appearing on the new nonfiction shelf at the Mesa Library. His chapter, Flight and Propulsion, strengthens my conviction that Einstein, while seemingly straying from the main current of physical research in his later years, was on scent like a bloodhound when he persisted in trying to lock in on a unified field theory. Not a whole lot of specifics as to why they were talking about a unified field theory at the time, but it had to be in relation to these UFO sightings by the Department of Energy. And now we move on to the more recent documents that the Department of Energy released, and these are interesting indeed. First of all, one was filed on March 19th of 2018, and it had the following to say, I blank, yes, a lot of this stuff has been redacted, spotted what I believe to look like a drone flying west to east over Sandia National Laboratory. I confirmed with blank, if that it could be a drone and he replied that it could be it was low flying and had no sound with alternating white and red led lighting by the way sandia national laboratories also simply known as sandia is one of three research and development laboratories of the united states department of energy's national nuclear security administration so a very very sensitive area indeed the report goes on to say sandia's security office called me at Vasco Post and said that they had spotted a low-flying jet that made no sound flying over Sandia around the same time. The drone continued to fly east until it was out of sight. I notified the central alarm station of what I saw. Now there is a striking similarity between this report and most of those that are going to follow in this video. They appear to be drones of some kind. However, every attempt to find a drone operator has come up empty. And if this was some sort of foreign government trying to spy on our nuclear facilities, why would they put flashing lights on these drones? 
Whoever's doing this has got to be a really, really skilled prankster, or it might very well be something else, because the Department of Energy has to deal with drone incursions all the time. It's very illegal to fly drones over facilities like this, and law enforcement deals with this problem on a regular basis. And yet, in all of these cases, they are unable to track down anybody. Let's move on to another interesting incident. On April 30th of 2019, at approximately 10.30 hours, I, blank, was notified by the Central Alarm Station that they heard over the escort channel about a possible drone sighting. The operator said that he heard the escorts at the Building 815 project talk about a drone in their area at approximately 10.27 hours. I made contact with security escorts blank and blank at Building 815 in the process area. They both said, quote, I saw a round silver drone flying around the process area and periodically stopping and hovering for several seconds. Once it continued, it flew to the north of my location and stopped and hovered for several more seconds. It flew over the area for several minutes and departed southeast. It was really high up. And it looked like it was just under the clouds. The drone-like object was flying at a distance and height that made identification of the characteristics of the object impossible for blank. Blank contact blank who said there was no scheduled drone flights for sites 300 today. I had blank sweep Coral Hollow Road and found no personnel in the area during his sweep. Blank drove to Building 836 area and reported that the area was clear. I continued to monitor the process area, resulting in a negative sighting. At 1040 hours, Blank was notified of the incident. Blank and Blank were also notified. Future notifications were made to Blank and Blank. Yes, tons of redactions, but a very interesting account. The next report came about on June 24th, 2019. Quote, I, blank, responded to parking lot E8 on a report of a drone sighting. I met with reporting party blank at E8 parking lot where he was waiting. RP stated that he was facing southbound when he noticed what appeared to be a drone hovering 40 feet above building, building 5A3 and appeared to be recording. RP described the drone as four rotor propeller drone, approximately two feet in diameter, with flashing blue and red lights, and the body was dark in color. Once again, this sounds like an amateurish drone flight if they had flashing red and blue lights on the damn thing, but we'll go on. RP stated that he noticed the drone at approximately 2355 hours and called the National Ignition Facility Control Room to notify them about the situation. At approximately 001 hours, Central Alarm Station was notified about the situation. At approximately 2357 hours, the drone started to move westbound towards Westgate Drive. Note, all time and distances are approximate. Protective force actions. All patrols were in a heightened state of alert. A grid search was conducted given the direction and travel of the drone. Perimeter patrol did not observe any suspicious activity. Patrols were unable to locate the drone in or around the lab and blank cleared the drone incident. Once again, this sounds very much like a drone, but at the same time, their investigations turned up nothing. And again, if the operator really wanted to go unnoticed, why did he have flashing lights on the thing? On October 18th, 2019, there is yet another mysterious incident. At 0240 hours, laboratory employee blank, site 300 maintenance mechanic blank, informed me of a possible unmanned aerial system flight over site 300. Blank stated that he saw a bright light in the sky. He noticed it was approaching his direction. He stopped on Route 3 across from B892 as he followed the light of the UAS from the east to the west. The UAS slowed as it approached, leading Blank to believe that it had a camera. He watched for a moment, noticing two red lights and one white light on the UAS. He estimated the red lights were 10 to 14 inches apart. He did not know 
notice identifying marks on the UAS. The UAS flew approximately 20 to 30 feet above his vehicle. I went off-site and conducted a perimeter check on Coral Hollow Road from the fireworks facility to the maintenance facility at Carnegie Park to see if any vehicles were parked on Coral Hollow Road, which met with negative results. I informed the CAS of the incident and the watch commander. The watch commander made all notifications and sent out the email event notification. Once again, nobody was ever found in association with this drone, even though, as I said before, putting flashing lights on something like this or lights that were that noticeable would be pretty amateurish if you're trying not to be detected. And before we get to the big event, the swarms of UAPs flying over one of our nuclear facilities, I got one more for you. And by the way, this one came about on July 22nd of 2020. Quote, at approximately 12.08 hours, I noticed a white fixed wing drone flying over at approximately 100 feet above building 271 heading westbound. The drone was only observed during flight and was never observed hovering. I called blank who is in the sergeant's office to verify if he received a phone call for an authorized drone flyover. He said no and called blank to verify. Blank verified that there were no laboratory drone flyovers. At 12.09 hours, I notified the central alarm station about the unauthorized flyover. The CAS made an announcement over the PFD radios. I drove down Westgate Drive to track the flyover, and at approximately 12.12 12 hours, Blank reported the flyover with the drone heading north. I performed a perimeter check on Vasco and Patterson Pass roads and found no operator. At approximately 1219 hours, I completed the perimeter sweep and returned back on site. But the most disturbing incident of all took place on September 29, 2019 at the Palo Verde Nuclear Generating Station. Daphne Rodriguez, an acting security section chief at the plant, called the duty officer at the headquarters to report that a number of drones were flying over and around a restricted area near the nuclear power plant's Unit 3, which houses one of the three pressurized water reactors. Thomas Kenzida, a headquarters emergency response officer, subsequently recreated an incident report. The report reads as follows, quote, Officer noted several drones, five or six, flying over the site. The drones are circling the three-unit site inside and outside the protected area. The drones have flashing red and white lights and are estimated to be two to three hundred feet above the site. It was reported the drones had spotlights on while approaching the site that they turned off when they entered the security owner controlled area. Drones were first noticed at 2050 Mountain Standard Time and are still over the site as of 2147 Mountain Standard Time. In other words, they were there for nearly an hour. And on September 30th, they were back. Quote, Four drones were observed flying beginning at 2051 Mountain Standard Time and continuing through the time of this report, 2113 Mountain Standard Time. In other words, at least 22 minutes and probably longer. As occurred last night, the drones are flying in, through, and around the owner-controlled area, the security owner-controlled area, and the protected area. Also, as last night, the drones are described as large with red and white flashing lights. Spot lights have not been noted tonight. The licensee has not changed their security posture. The licensee continues to monitor the drones. As of 0355 Eastern Daylight Time, no drones have been observed at the site since before 0020 Mountain Standard Time. In other words, they were there until after midnight. Local law enforcement surveyed the area and were unable to locate drones on the ground or anyone controlling the drones. Now, the Palo Verde security team filed their own report, quote, on 9-30-2019 at approximately 2051 hours, it was reported by a security team leader that unmanned aerial vehicles were approaching the plant from the east. The hours of darkness made it difficult to estimate the altitude at which the UAVs were flying. The UAVs appeared to have been launching from behind the mountain range at the intersection of Southern Avenue and 361 Avenue just east of the plant. Four UAVs were confirmed to have been spotted at one time flying northwest over Unit 1 and returning northeast over Unit 3. 
Maricopa County Sheriff's Office deputies were dispatched to the area of the mountain range with a security unit team leader in an attempt to determine the location of the UAV operators, but were unsuccessful. No other UAVs were observed after approximately 2,300 hours. So apparently, nothing reported after midnight, at least not by these officers. These UAVs were believed to have been the same UAVs that flew over the plant the night before. In spite of an extensive investigation, no sign of the drone operators was ever found. Nobody has any idea why these drones flew over this facility, what their objectives were, who might have been controlling them, and if they were drones at all. Once again, we have no footage of these things and no information to determine whether or not they were conventional drones or something else. If they were drones on some sort of spy mission, some sort of stealth mission for a foreign government, there's no way in hell they would have had flashing LED lights and certainly not something like searchlights. And if this was some kind of publicity stunt from some environmental group that opposes nuclear power plants, then why did they never go public? This is a colossal mystery, one that has eluded any sort of explanation since 2019, and only a Freedom of Information Act request filed by a UAP investigator made this whole thing public anyway. It remains a very, very serious mystery, and one of the very few where several unidentified objects were reported at the same time over a nuclear facility, but it seems to follow an ongoing pattern. It seems that UAPs have been very, very interested in nuclear facilities all around the country, not just in New Mexico. And for those of you who think that this is a phenomenon associated with man's sudden interest in science fiction from the late 1940s onward, well, I'd like to share a headline from December 14th, 1944, quote, floating mystery ball is new Nazi air weapon, unquote. That's right. Spherical objects, mysterious spherical objects, were sighted by Air Force personnel in 1944 and were misinterpreted as being some sort of Nazi air weapon. You want to learn more about that? If this video gets 4,000 likes, I will make another video about the appearance of UAPs in the 1940s and even before that. And also, please, if you want to see more information about the CIA UFO files, check out the video linked at the end of this one. Need to get 4,000 likes on that video before I'll create a follow-up as well. Thank you very much for watching. Please like. Please subscribe, it's so important to the success of my channel, and also please check the description for various ways to support this content, and as always, stay angry about space.